Jason, Julie, Michelle, Paula, Bella, Alicia, Kylie, and Pastor Terry. And we are family. What? Huh? Well, we, we are family. I got all my sisters and me. We are family. Get up everybody and pray. Well, we want to welcome you to C3 Victory this morning. We are so glad you chose to join us. Whether you're at the house or at our watch party in person, we just want to welcome you. Is my 
Hey, church family, we're so glad that you decided to worship the Lord with us this morning. I want to give you a brief uh, giving moment opportunity today. 
And uh, I just wanna thank you so much for y'all being generous givers, that you're giving in your tithes, giving in your uh, offerings. But uh, we have an additional opportunity going through the month of December. So just three more weeks. And that is our giving tree, which is right here beside me. This giving tree is a way that you can impact financially or serving uh, not only your church family, but also the local community, our local area around us, other ministries that we're partnering with. And on this giving tree, and also, by the way, there's a digital giving tree, but on this physical one, what you're going to see is three different tabs. And when you go to our website at c3victory.com, you click on the giving tab. Underneath there, it'll say the giving tree. That, that's kind of the digital version of this tree. So you can go to either one. Maybe you're at a watch party this morning watching it. You can check out our giving tree. Or if you're at home or on the road, traveling, whatever's going on, you can participate with our giving tree through our online digital giving tree. And there's three different tags that I want to talk about. But today I want to highlight one, and that is our gold tags our gold tags. And what our gold tags are, it's uh, areas in our uh, community, ministries in our community that we're partnering with, that we're giving into to make a difference. And the one we've selected is the Bethlehem Maternity Home, the Bethlehem Mater Maternity Home. Uh, they are a part of what's called the Gabriel Project. The Gabriel Project of the Crossroads is an ecumenical uh, Christian nonprofit supporting pregnant women in crisis in an eight county area. They support them emotionally, spiritually, materially, and in education. And uh, there's different areas that you can give into in the Bethlehem Maternity Home. This tag that I'm holding up right now says baby bedding. So they need baby bedding and so you would just simply take this and uh, follow the prompts on our website and it'll show you exactly how you can participate, partner with us in providing for the Bethlehem Maternity Home. I wanna read you a quote that they uh, had of Barbara McCain Williams, and they said about 85% of women who aborted babies wouldn't have aborted them if they would have had someone to talk to. Someone to talk to. Here at C3 Victory, we believe in the sanctity of life. We believe that children are created in the image of God, that his plan for them is to live and not die. But you know what? It's not good enough just to say that and believe it. We've got to follow it up with action. It's not just what we say we're against. It's also by our actions what we tell people we are for. And so I, I would ask you just to take a moment and pray about any additional gifts that you would like to make to our giving tree, to our gold tag uh, that goes straight to the Bethlehem Maternity Home. I wanna thank you for giving. I wanna thank you for being faithful givers. You have generous, wonderful hearts, and we're so grateful. I'm so grateful to be your pastor. Would you pray with me as we pray about the giving? Father, we just thank you so much that you've given us means, God, that you've given us a way to give. God, I just thank you for every person that goes through our text to give. God, gives faithfully their tithes and offerings. And God, I thank you for increasing and providing in such a way that we can bless those around us. God, we believe that you've called us to make an impact in this community. And we thank you, God, because you've provided ways for us to do that. We thank you for this giving moment in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Good morning. I'm Pastor Terry. Welcome so much to C3 Victory, and I'm so glad you chose to join us. I hope you enjoyed that welcome message we just gave with the ladies and the sister, my sisters in Christ. You know that song, We Are Family, is a really fun song. And as soon as Pastor Sam said, hey, I want you to give a message on family, the first thing that came to my mind is We Are Family by Sister Sledge. I want to share a piece of that song with you. It says, everyone can see we're together as we walk on by. And we fly just like birds of a feather. All of the people around us, they say, can they be that close? Just let me state for the record, we're giving love in a family dose. What specifically grabs me about that song is because it says everyone can see we're together. And whether we're family in Christ or whether we're our natural family, people can tell we're together. 
When you're walking with your sisters, your natural born sisters, people can tell maybe because you look alike. But when you walk with your sisters in Christ, you should all be sharing the attributes of Christ. And people should be able to tell that you are truly family. And that is what my message is about today. You know, I have sisters in Christ and you just saw a few of them. I have brothers in Christ. Everyone watching, if you're a born again believer, you are my sister or my brother. But I also have natural family. I have two sisters and a brother. And we are connected because of the DNA that runs through our body. We share biological parents and we have similarities. We have red hair, brown eyes, or we are the same height. We have common characteristics in the way we behave or the way our body moves, very, very common. People can tell we have commonalities because we have a blood parents and we share the biological parents. But I'm also connected to my church family, and we also have things in common. What runs through our, our body, our spiritual body, is the blood of Christ. And we share a Heavenly Father. So I love that we both share parents and blood runs through us, whether it's your physical body or your spiritual body. If you are a born-again believer, then the blood of Jesus runs through you, and we share a Heavenly Father. I think that's just exciting, and that's exactly what my message is going to be about, comparing earthly, natural, uh, biological families and spiritual families today. So before we go any further, I want to go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for this morning. I thank you for those that are watching, whether they're streaming uh, far, far away or just here in Victoria and staying home and staying safe. I ask that you bless those that came uh, to the watch party and that you keep them safe as well. God, help us to have a true understanding during this time of year, during Christmas, when we celebrate you. Help us to truly understand the meaning of family, both spiritual and physical. I thank you, God, for this message, and I thank you for the sisters that helped me to make this message a fun one and an exciting one. But God, help us to never underestimate the power of your word as we search your word today and grab your heart for family. I pray that eyes be enlightened and hearts be opened and ears be opened so that they can hear what the Holy Spirit is telling them. I ask that you bless everyone and bless this word now. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's dive right in to the Word of God. And all of my scriptures today are from the uh, Passion Translation. I love the Passion Translation, especially for a sermon like this where you're wanting to get God's full heart and God's full attention on, this, on a particular verse. And I want to introduce to you the book of Ephesians. If you um, are a new believer, you may not have gone through the Bible, and these different books uh, may be very new to you. But the book of Ephesians was written by Paul. And Paul was writing to encourage the church of Ephesus. So they are called Ephesians. And the purpose of this book is to explain the nature and the purpose of the body of believers, or I could say the church family. So if you wonder, well, what does God say about church family and family? Because it actually references both. Go to the book of Ephesians. Actually, I want to challenge you through the month of December to read the book of Ephesians. You will enjoy everything that you find. Most of my favorite verses are found in the book of Ephesians. So let's start off with loving relationships in our natural biological families. God actually addresses that, and he addresses that in Ephesians 5, 22 through, 22 through 33. That's a lot of verses. I'm going to read through, stop a little bit, talk a little bit about them. But basically, 5, 22 through 33 talks about loving relationships in our natural biological families. Starts off in 22, for wives. He starts with us first. Mm -hmm. This means being supportive to your husbands like you are tenderly devoted to your Lord. For the husband provides leadership for the wife, just as Christ provides leadership to the church as the savior and the reviver of the body. In the same way the church is devoted to Christ, let the wives be devoted to their husbands in everything. Now whenever we say the word body, we're talking about the church family. I love that word devoted. I wanted to know what that meant because he mentions that uh, the church is devoted to Christ and the wives should be devoted to their husbands in everything. So what does that mean exactly? Well, devoted means zealous, loyal, and affectionate. Just like Christ is zealous, loyal, and affectionate to the church, we should be zealous, affectionate, and loyal to our husbands. 
Now, verse 25, it talks to the husbands. And to the husbands, you are to demonstrate love for your wives with the same tender devotion that Christ demonstrated to us, his bride. For he died for us, sacrificing himself to make us holy and pure, cleansing us through the showering of the pure water of the word of God. All that he does in us is designed to make us mature and a mature church for his pleasure. Until we become a source of praise to him, glorious and radiant, beautiful and holy, without fault or without flaw. I want to read that again, uh, verse 27. All that he does for us is designed to make us mature church for his pleasure. Until we become a source of praise to him, glorious and radiant, beautiful and holy, without fault or flaw. And we will not become without fault or flaw until we are in heaven praising him. And so all that he's done is to help us to become that until we are with him. And you'll, um, you'll know and hear in other uh, scriptures throughout the word that we were created for his pleasure. God created man for himself. In verse 28, husbands have the obligation of loving and caring for their wives the same way they love and care for their own bodies. For to love your wife is to love your own self. No one abuses his own body, but pampers it, serving and satisfying its needs. That's exactly what Christ does for the church. He serves and satisfies us as members of his body, quote, his family. And that is what the husband should be doing for the wives. That sounds like a, a, call, a large order for you men, but I have faith that you can do it because that God created you to be able to do that. Verse 31, for this reason, a man is to leave his father and his mother and lovingly hold to his wife, since the two have become joined as one flesh. Marriage is the beautiful design of the Almighty. It's a great and sacred mystery meant to be a vivid example of Christ and his church. So every married man should be gracious to his wife, just as he is gracious to himself. And every wife should be tenderly devoted to her husband. I love the way Paul just wraps it up and ends it right there with a little summary. We are living examples of Christ in our natural families. So my note there is saying that we are living examples of Christ in our natural families. He built husband and wife. He built the sanct uh, sanctity of marriage. And so that is a representation of the body of Christ. And as a born-again believer, then your life should be representing uh, Christ's love for the church. And this is his direction for us on that. So let's talk about children. We can't leave them out. When we talk about family, we also are talking about children. So in Ephesians 6, I'm jumping to 6. We were in 5, so let's go to Ephesians 6. 1 through 4. It's not a lot, it's not a lot of verses. It's just 1 through 4. But it is Ephesians 6, 1 through 4. So let's pay attention, children. If you're at the house with your parents or you're sitting here at the watch party, uh, open up your ears and, and, and listen to this. Children, if you want to be wise, listen to your parents and do what they tell you. And the, Lord's, and the Lord will help you. I want to uh, emphasize, if you want to be wise, listen to your parents and do what they tell you, and the Lord will help you. Verse 2, for the commandment, honor your father and your mother, was the first of the Ten Commandments with a promise attached. That's very important. It's the first of the Ten Commandments with a promise attached. It says, for the commandment, honor, honor your father and mother, was the first of the Ten Commandments with the promise attached. You will prosper and live a long, full life if you honor your parents. I don't know about you, but when I was young, I took that very seriously. If you honor your father and your mother, you will prosper and live a long life. There was a time in my life where I had to step back and choose to honor my parents. It was in the early 90s. I was recently born again. I was, I guess, in my late 20s or early 30s. Do the math. Anyway, 
uh, I had to choose to honor my father. He left us at a really young age, and it was um, a lot of bitterness there throughout my junior high and high school years. And so when I was born again, I chose to uh, read a lot of uh, Paul's, Paul's um, books, and I read this in Ephesians, and I remember saying, wow, if I want to live a successful life and I want to be prosperous, I need to do something. And the very first thing God laid on my heart was to learn to honor my father. I'll never forget, I was at a Baptist church, and I ran down to the altar. Baptist churches have altars. They lift up a little higher than this, and so I knelt down. And about where you kneel down, your face can just sort of hit right at the altar. I laid my hands down, and I put my face in my arms as I was kneeling, and I gave all of my um, disappointments, gave all of my fears, gave all of my tears to the Lord. And I asked God from that point forward to help me forgive my dad, and he did. And I honored my dad, and I still honor him today, to this day, and he's 80-something years old. So I feel like there are times as children, that, as adult children, we have to choose to make that step to forgive our mom or to forgive our dad. Um, doesn't mean what they did was right. What it means is this was a commandment for Terry. This was not a condition of my father, and I wanted to choose to forgive and to honor so that I would live a prosperous life. Prosperity doesn't necessarily mean money. I'm not uh, dripping with riches and gold, but I do feel like I have a prosperous life. I have sisters in Christ. I have friends. I have a wonderful husband and wonderful children, and that is about the best riches a woman could ever have. And I feel like that is largely attributed to that choice back in the 90s. So verse 4, okay, that stops with the children, but this section goes on to verse 4, and it talks about the fathers. The fathers, you guys have a heavy load. Fathers, don't exasperate your children, but raise them up with loving discipline and counsel that brings the revelation of the Lord to them. So oftentimes we want to discipline with the rod or discipline with our hand or discipline with the tone or discipline with our words, but we need to be careful. It says raise them up with loving discipline and counsel. The best thing you can do is discipline and then counsel. Discipline, whether that is a paddling or whether that is a stern, burst, uh, stern uh, word, then you counsel. You explain why you discipline them. This discipline and counsel is a package deal, and it's the opposite of exasperate. So what is exasperate? That's a big word. Well, it means to irritate or annoy, annoy or provoke. And so don't irritate and agitate your children. Don't talk down to them. Don't speak a negative about them. Don't correct them in front of their children. Respect them, raise them up, give them loving discipline and counsel. And that, it says, uh, that brings the revelation of the Lord. So that's also a condition. As a father, if you do love loving discipline and counsel, it brings revelation of the Lord. So then your children will have revelation of the Lord. So I love those verses and there's a lot there. Okay, so that is our physical family. Now let's go to our spiritual family. Within our spiritual family, God reminds us of a divine calling that we have. Also in, in Ephesians, we find this in Ephesians 4, 1 through 5. The word really has so much more about our spiritual family than our physical family. There were so many verses I had to stop because I could be here all day. So I just chose Ephesians and I think I have one verse in Colossians. But the Bible is jam-packed with how to treat your church family. So let's start with Ephesians 4, 1 through 5. Paul, it says, as Paul, the prisoner of the Lord, I plead with you to walk holy. This is Paul counseling the church of Ephesus. I plead you to walk holy in a way that is suitable to you, to your rank. What rank? The rank that we have in Jesus Christ as born-again believers, given to you in your divine calling. Verse 2, with tender humility and quiet patience, always demonstrate gentleness and generous love toward one another, especially toward those who may try your patience. I think that's a good one. I like that one. I'm going to read that one again. With tender humility and quiet patience, always demonstrate gentleness and generous love toward one another, especially those who try our patience. It's easy to love those that are easy to love, but what about the ones that are hard to love? He doesn't say consider it or think about it. He says always demonstrate gentleness and generous love. 
toward those that try our patience. Verse 3, be faithful to guard the sweet harmony of the Holy Spirit among you in the bonds of peace, being one body and one spirit, as you were all called into the same glorious hope and divine destiny. We are all called into the same divine destiny, and that is the body of believers, the family of God, and having that divine appointment from God, our Heavenly Father. Verse 5, for the Lord God is one, and so are we, for we share one faith, one baptism, and one Father. And he is the perfect Father who leads us all, works through us all, and lives in us all. Speaking of baptisms, we had so many baptisms last Sunday, and it's so exciting to know that each one of those now are part of my family as well. Now let's go into Ephesians 4, 21 through 32. It reminds us of our life as new believers and how to live our new life in Christ. 21, if you have really experienced the anointed one and heard his truth, it will be seen in your life, for we know that the ultimate reality is embodied in Christ. It should be seen. People walking down the street, just like our song said, should see. People are watching us. They should be able to see that you are God's chosen one. You are God's child. And it says, if you really are and you really have experienced the anointed one, which leads me to believe some people have it and they think they have, if you really experience the anointed one and you've heard the truth, it will be seen in your life. At the end of the day, Christians are different, and they should be seen as different. Verse 22, and he has taught you to let go of the lifestyle of the ancient man, your old self, life which was corrupted by sin and deceitful desires that spring from delusions. Now it's time to be made new by every revelation that's been given to you and to be transformed as you embrace the glorious Christ within within as your new life and live in union with him. For God has recreated you all over again. I love that. We talk about being a new man. We talk about new wine. Here it is, right in the word. For God has recreated you all over again in his perfect righteousness. And you now belong in, to him in the realm of true holiness. And you now belong to him in the realm of true holiness. So discard every form of dishonesty and lying so that you will be known as one who always speaks the truth for we all belong to one another again how are you going to be known what is your reputation you know my boys have a reputation of being hard workers that's because they belong to tommy kurtz and he is known as being a hard worker so they have this reputation well there's other reputations people have too <laughs> so let's make sure we have a good reputation as we represent christ or whether you have a reputation in your family. I guess that's my question sometimes. What is your family representing, whether it's your church family or your family? But don't let, in verse 26, don't let the passion of your emotions lead you to sin. Don't let anger control you or, or be fuel uh, for revenge, not even for a day. Don't give the slanderous accuser, the devil, an opportunity to manipulate you. If any of you has stolen from someone, Never do it again. Instead, be industrious, earning an honest living, and then you'll have enough to bless those in need. This is a, just good guidance about uh, you know, not letting your anger control you and, and watch what you're saying and don't let the accuser take you down and manipulate you. And instead, uh, earn an honest living and be industrious. Why? So that you have what you need to give to the other people in the family. Verse 29, and never let ugly or hateful words come from your mouth. Did you ever wash your child's mouth out with soap? <laughs> I have. <laughs> and the way I did it, just put some soap on a, a rag and put it in his mouth. And I, it, it sounds horrible probably to some of the modern day moms, but it was, it was sort of popular back in the 90s. I have a couple of ladies here with me and some of them are nodding their heads. So why? Because, because ugly or hateful words came out of their mouth. And as moms, we're also called to discipline our children under the umbrella of the father, right? So uh, discipline and then counsel and explain to them why those words are not good. And if you knew this verse, which I don't know if I knew it when I was a young mom, but it's right here, Ephesians 4, 29. Don't let ugly and hateful words come from your mouth. Instead, let your words become beautiful gifts that encourage others. 
Do this by speaking words of grace to help them. Teach your children how to speak gracefully to one another and how to speak encouraging to one another. And let your children know that words are powerful. Tell your children God created the world with his words and that they create a negative or positive environment with their words. And show your children where in scripture that is. Verse 30, the Holy Spirit of God has sealed you in Jesus Christ until you experience your full salvation. We're sealed until we experience our full salvation in heaven. So never grieve the Spirit of God or take for granted his holy influence in your life. Lay aside bitter words, temper tantrums, revenge, profanity, and insults, but instead be kind and affectionate toward one another. Has God graciously forgiven you? The answer is yes. Then graciously forgive others in the depths of Christ's love. So, you know, we um, have a tendency to imitate our Father. And I know we talked about imitating our Heavenly Father, but I love to see little boys imitating their dads. You see that all the time. Uh, I know I, ha I have a grandson named Trip, and he wants to be so much like his dad, Trevor. He's like, Gigi, comb my hair to the side, and, 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 and can you unbutton the first two buttons? That way I can be like my dad, and don't forget to put my gold chain on. So he just, he just loves my son Trevor, and he wants to be just like him. And I just think that that is so cool, because by nature, no one tells a little boy, go be like your dad. By nature, they want to be like their dad. And it is the funnest thing to watch as a Gigi. But by nature, we should want to be like Jesus. It should just be our natural desire to be like Jesus. So be imitators of God, Ephesians 5, 1 through 2. Be imitators of God in everything you do, for then you will represent your Father as his beloved sons and daughters and continue to walk surrendered to the extravagant love of Christ. For he surrendered his life as a sacrifice you. And now finally I'll wrap it up with Colossians 3 12. You are always and dearly loved by God so robe yourself with virtues of God since you have been divinely chosen to be holy. Be merciful as you endeavor to understand others and be compassionate showing kindness toward all. Be gentle and humble unoffendable, unoffendable in your patience with others. That is a wonderful verse to end on, Colossians 3, 12. It gives you clear, clear guidance on how to be a child of God. And I just love those words, compassionate, kindness, gentle, humility, and unoffendability. I pray that during these unprecedented times and during times of confusion that you can grab hold of the word of God and that it will empower you to be the person that God's called you to be, whether you're a mother or a father, a daughter, um, an aunt and or, or an uncle. I pray that you bless your family during this time, both your church family and your spiritual, your, your spiritual family and your physical family. I pray that you spend time and pray over them during these times, whether we're praying about COVID issues or whether we're praying about the Christmas holidays. I pray that you take the Christmas time and acknowledge what God has done for you and that you remember him during this time and that you take these verses and you read them and you meditate over them. Early on in the Bible in the Old Testament it says meditate on my, day, my word day and night and you will be successful in all that you do. I just pray blessings over you. If you are here and you're listening to this no matter where you're at and you say, I don't know that I have a new life. I don't know that I've ever been born again. I'm not for sure if I'm in the family of God. Um, I'm just now hearing this. I want to pray with you. And so repeat after me in your heart or out loud if you're wherever you're at. And as the scriptures say, the ultimate reality is embodied in Jesus. So today, I choose today to believe, I believe in Jesus, that Jesus, you are the Son of God, and that you died on the cross for me. And that when I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that you are Lord, I will be saved. I accept your gift of grace today, and I choose to be a child of God and adopted into your family. If you prayed that today for the first time, then congratulations, you're my new brother or sister. I want you to go to our website and scroll down and you'll find a place that says, I chose to follow Jesus. And you can select that and fill it out and we'll get back with you. And if you have any prayer needs, 
we can do um, a couple of things. You can fill out a prayer request form, or you can go on uh, to our website and um, find the section that talks about the prayer request. And not only will we call you and pray with you, we will be praying for you. So we want to pray for you, we want to pray with you, we want to hear about you, we want to know that you've joined our family. And the best way right now to do that is through our website. So I thank you for listening today. I ask that the Lord bless you and keep you and enjoy this holiday season. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for joining us for church today. We hope you enjoyed Pastor Terry's message. Remember to join us every Sunday, either on Facebook or in person. Bye! Bye.